Okay, guys, we got Aspen. Shoshan, you ready? Hey, how are you? Jose Montesino from Lucha Libre Online. Hi. Um, nice to kind of sort of meet you. <laughs> so this is uh, um, your second fight on PFL. You're fighting Olena. Last season, she was uh, basically a, a brawl. She had amazing fights, um, amazing uh, combinations. How you visualize this fight and how's been your preparation for it? Um, my preparation for this fight has been similar to any other. Uh, not really focused too much on the opponent. Sure, we're aware of her tendencies and certain things that she does, but that's not the deciding factor in how we're training up until the point of knowing who she is. It's good to be aware, but hyper-focusing on the opponent is never a good option. Um, be, this being your second fight on the PFL, and knowing that you fight before on, on UFC, how is it different? Do you like this system a little bit more? Or do you, um, which one is, is better for you? For me personally, the PFL has been better than the UFC. However, they're just different in how they're ran. They're different in uh, how they do certain things. Both are very high level and they just, they vary in certain things. Like it's more relaxed with the PFL, which I truly appreciate. It came from like, with the UFC, it's very militant do this at this time, period. With the PFL, sure, sure, we have to do it, but it's more of like, it's good vibes. Like, we'll get it done, and everybody's kind of happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Lorenzo. Hey, Esmond, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for giving us the time. Um, your past three fights have gone to decision. Um, I'm sure you must just be itching to get this fight to a finish. Um, how much of an emphasis did you put on that during your training for this upcoming fight? Uh, you definitely prefer a finish to a decision at any time. It gets a little bit difficult when you're fighting the best people in your weight class in the world. You're all trying to finish each other and uh, doing everything in your ability to do that. So obviously I would definitely prefer that. And that is uh, what we train for and what we are uh, working towards. But at the same time, it's not really a guarantee. This is going to be your first full season in the uh, PFL format. Um, you had the fight last year. One's not really enough to get that feel for, it, in my opinion. Um, what can you tell us about any preparations you might or might not have made uh, during your ramp up to this first full season? Definitely. So uh, going through a first full season with PFL is completely different than the format of any other promotion I've been with or any other fight promotion period whether I've been with them or not. Um, nobody else does the seasonal format and you do not fight that close together. It's something that it, it excites me. I'm very uh, looking forward to it. However, for the very first fight, it, the preparation was similar to any other camp because as I said, it's the first one. There's no, uh, no big difference there. Afterwards, preparing for the one fairly soon after this, that's going to be where the differences and the changes start to come in and trying to mitigate the effects of hard training all the time and uh, trying to prevent injury, really. Thanks, Aspen. Appreciate it. Can't wait to see you on Friday. Thank you. Anik. Hi, Aspen. Anik Subramanian, Fightbook MMA. How important was it for you to get a victory in your last fight, and what confidence can you take from it going into your first full PFL season? It was extremely important to get a victory in the last fight, especially considering it was my first time with the new promotion, first time officially at the new weight class. And, uh, yeah, it was a very big deal for me uh, personally and professionally. It's, awesome. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, it's all good. Um, and one more question for me. Aspen, you've been smiling a lot this week. How dangerous is a happy Aspen lad in the smart cage? I think a dangerous person, like, so any chick that you see here, we're all dangerous. We're all really good at what we do. But so mm -hmm. many of them are just so, like, grim and grr, trying to be... I don't know if that's just them naturally or what, but when you truly are confident and you're happy with what you're doing, it's like, you don't need to put on a persona. Like I'm scary. No, we're all here. We're all fucking scary. Excuse my language, but it's, I don't know. It's just good to feel good and happy to be here, confident and prepared for what I do and able to actually enjoy fight week. So it's like, yeah, this is awesome. Awesome. Appreciate the good vibes and good luck on Friday. Thank you. Jonathan. Hey, Aspen, Jonathan Ramakan, Five Reasons Sports. Uh, we spoke a couple of weeks ago, 
and uh, Kaya and Kylo Ren made their appearance on the interview. Do you bring them with you when you're coming to fight or, or do they stay at home? So I don't. Kaya, I totally could. My little uh, older husky. But uh, Kylo, he's a great boy and I've trained. He's very well trained, but he's too protective. Like in this situation, he didn't try to eat a cameraman. He'd chill right here until said cameraman was right right next to me trying to grab me. But besides that, yeah. Um, so one out of the three would be very good. The other one is she's, I just foster failed her and I've had her for like eight weeks and extremely hyper, very sweet. We're working on training, but she would be like up in the microphone. So I can't really take one and leave the other two, you know? That's fair. I appreciate it. And then also, uh, you're obviously, like like Nick said, uh, you're smiling a lot more this fight camp. You're not as drained, obviously, having to make it down to 135. How are you feeling just overall, obviously, just a couple of days out from the fight? Yeah, so this is, uh, if anybody doesn't know, these interviews are being done on weight cut day. So if you have moody fighters, that's why. But for me, this is usually like, oh, it's terrible. You don't even want to move. But I'm feeling good. Like, sure, there's going to be a tiny, like a small weight cut. But it's not serious. It's not like, oh, man, it's, it's like I'm going to be on death's doorstep tonight and I feel like crap. I don't. I feel pretty darn good. It's like I'm thinking about walking around and going to go see the bodies exhibit after this. Like, it's nice to feel good and be excited for what I'm doing. Appreciate your time and good luck this Friday. Thank you. Jake. Hey, Aspen. Great to talk to you. Jake Nowaker here from the Scrap News. Um, just wondering, first time back in Vegas, at least for a fight since 2021. How does it feel to be back? Uh, this is kind of, I don't know for most fighters, but for me, the majority of my fights have been in Vegas. I've done quite a bit of traveling, but it's kind of like, um, it's a fight capital. Yeah. Anytime I'm here, it's usually for fighting or training. So that feels like showing up to work for me. It's uh, just part of it. And just curious, when you joined the PFL, um, was that after you had known the 155 division was on the way out or were you under the assumption you were going to be lightweight or was it always featherweight? I had no idea they were doing a 145 division. It just happened to the time I was in the UFC coincided with the time they were trying to bring in a 145 division or at least were thinking about it. So honestly, it was just luck and perfect timing. Um, I was aware they had the 155s, which for me would be, all right, great. We walk on and we fight, which is what a lot of the chicks were doing. But I was not aware at the time, and I don't think anybody was except for PFL and them what they were trying to do, that a 145 division was on the horizon. And someone already brought up the, the format and the potential frequency of fights. With that being said, I know you have the 145 cut down pat, it seems. Are you at all concerned with having to do that uh, numerous times in a shorter duration of time compared to the UFC? I'm not. So even compared to uh, last year when I was newly at the 45 weight class and after coming off of a horrendous trying to make 35 for a long time, like I was not in a good physical state, but um, I've, it, it's even better this time. So the cut coming into it even lower, I, that's not going to be an issue. Um, it's more or less the, what we do for a living. It's difficult. We train all the time. We fight all the time or we don't fight all the time, but we're always sparring. We're always preparing for the next fight. So trying to mitigate the effects of training is more what I'm concerned about than the cuts. Cause for me, it's not a major one. There's going to be no serious damage or coming back from that. Like there was for 35. Good to hear. And last one for me, million dollars or the championship, which do you uh, value more? Uh, they go hand in hand. You, you, one is equal to the other here. But I will say, like, if you ask the grandma down the street, it's like, hey, you want to go fight for a million bucks? She's going to say, yeah. So it's exciting regardless. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aspen, and best of luck. Thank you. Patrick. Hey, Aspen. This is Patrick McCord from Combat Sports UK. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Great to hear. And you know, last time out, you got your first win in what was a little bit. How good did it feel to get back in the win column? Fantastic, especially against such a high caliber opponent as Julia. Great to hear. And how do you feel about the matchup that you have here on Friday night? I think it's an exciting matchup. Uh, Southpaw, she's, she's something else and uh, she likes to throw big bombs. So there's that. Yeah, I've already uh, experienced that at the media day today. She shut down my question. But, um, you know, 
Um, does it feel? Did it feel good to kind of right the wrongs the last time out? And do you want to continue to right the wrongs of the UFC tenure in this next time out as well? I really don't look at it that way. There's, it's not wrong. It's all a learning experience, a learning thing. Like I'm still fairly young, but I've been in the sport a long time, and I've done a lot, seen a lot, experienced a lot. So it's not even writing wrongs. It's just writing a new chapter. Great to hear, and good luck on Friday night. Thank you. MMA locker room. Hey, Aspen, how's it going? MMA locker room, part of Puff Sports Radio. Sweet. It's going well. Can you talk to me about your uh, training partners, our MMA Gold Fight team, how uh, Fluffy Hernandez is helping you, how Max Griffin is helping you in KGB? Um, yeah, so KGB and I have not trained for this camp. She's a friend, and she's uh, – yeah, no, she's an awesome person. But Max and Fluffy are my teammates 24-7 year-round. As far as Fluffy goes, if, if I'm wanting to get rid of them, I couldn't. Um, yeah, no, they are fantastic and doing very, very well. They're both a wealth of knowledge. We've all been around for a very long time. And, uh, yeah, no, they're fantastic at what they do. I am very blessed with the teammates I have and the team I have and the coaches. Like, it's I couldn't ask for anything more. And I just want to get your take on this, you know, because at the UFC, it's just all about getting a win, getting a finish, um, you know, finishing a fight with the win. But here at the PFL, you get rewarded for finishes early in the first round. Does that have your game plan implemented a little bit more towards the finishes and doing a heavy ground and pound game for this fight coming up? That would be my preference for every fight, but um, it's not really something you could overly plan for because then you'll get a little bit sloppy and just you're trying to it's like if you're okay, if you're trying to do something and you're trying to avoid this one pitfall, you're absolutely going to hit it. Like if all you're thinking about is I got to do this, I got to do this, you're not going to do it. So I'm not hyper focusing or hyper fixating on you got to finish in this round at this time. Work for the finish, the finish will come. Got it. And then last one for me. Uh, do, do you feel any type of feelings that, you know, if you get all the way down to the championship, you won't be able to have a, a chance to maybe, you know, uh, get a match in with Kayla Harrison since she's not in the tournament? Or how, how do you feel about that? So I think as far as Kayla goes, I would love to fight her. I've said that a bunch of times. I'd love to fight her. But it's completely on what she chooses to do and what PFL chooses to do. Because she's clearly not in this tournament. And for me, my foreseeable future is within it. But uh, after the tournament, I, I would say if they wanted to do like a special fight, but like I'm fighting every six to eight weeks here. But we'd see, we'll see. Like if that fight comes on, on the uh, horizon, if they offer it, I'm taking it. Anyone else? Any final questions for Aspen? I do. Uh, Cassandra, go ahead. Cassandra Cousineau, LV Sports Biz. Hi, Aspen. Um, Hi. You've been in a professional fighter for over 10 years now. I mean, you started really early before you were about 18 years old. Um, does it, or how does the urgency of this kind of tournament help bring the fun back into this being just a, a job for you after a while? Yeah, I think like anything, you can get burned out. And I was definitely at that point. It was just like negative thing after negative thing, like blowing out my knee, all kinds of bad stuff. And uh, or being shelved for five or six months at a time. Like it's just, it sucked. With the PFL, it's completely different. And it kind of takes you back. So the last time I was able to fight frequently all the time was when I was amateur. I was 18 years old because you're, you're booking your own fights. You're able to uh, hopefully get a quick turnaround. I haven't had that experience as a pro in forever, basically. So with the PFL, not only do I have guaranteed fights during a guaranteed time frame, I also have the knowledge of like, it's not who like the, the flavor of the week is or who's the favorite this week. That person's going to get the next fight. Like you do well here, you keep fighting. And that is really, really cool and not something I'm used to. Final question. The PFL has a unique te technological aspect to it with the smart cage and being able to actually track strikes. How does that help you as a fighter? And, and have you actually integrated any of it into this camp after you had your first experience with it? I haven't. My coaches very well could have. I know at least one of them counts shots all the time, um, mm -hmm. but it's not something I thought of too much. Like I, th I remember thinking after last night, oh, that's cool, but it's mm -hmm. not. Uh, it's still a new thing for me. 
but striking coaches, boxing coaches have been counting shots forever since the dawn of time. Good luck Friday night. Thank you. Thank you, Aspen. Cool. Thank you.